Set your alarm for midnight as around that time a lunar eclipse is set to get underway and everyone on the nighttime facing side of Earth will be able to take in the celestial event. With more on this, we're joined by Elena Hyde, the director of the Allen Carswell Observatory at York University. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, so the last time we saw lunar eclipse in Toronto, I believe, was back in 2022. How common are these events? Well, they, they do tend to happen every year, but you can't always see them. Um, we had a partial lunar eclipse just last year in 2024, and it was really nothing spectacular. Um, of course, 2024, we also had a total solar eclipse, which was very spectacular. <laughs> uh, but So they do happen fairly regularly, but you're not always in the right place to see them, and they're not always a total eclipse. And so the total eclipse are the more spectacular and a total lunar eclipse this gets you what's called the blood moon or the moon really appears that lovely dark red color and it's a great thing to go out and just have a look at it's very very visible to everyone speaking of the the color you mentioned what is it that gives the moon that deep red color yeah, so the total lunar eclipse, the moon, uh, sorry, <laughs> the moon <laughs> looks red, even though Earth uh, is blocking the light from the sun. So the sunlight is smashing into the Earth, hitting the sunny side, and Earth is casting a shadow behind it, and the moon is moving into that shadow. But even though Earth is blocking the sunlight from directly reaching the moon, the moon actually still gets some light because Earth's atmosphere can actually do something called refraction, which is bending the sunlight. And red light tends to travel through, which is actually why the sunsets often look red as well. So we have Earth's atmosphere bending the sunlight around, and that red light um, gets through the atmosphere and hits the moon. And of course, it looks red. That is so cool. So for anyone who wants to make sure that they're catching the lunar eclipse at its best, uh, what, when probably is the best time to do so? So this eclipse is going to be really wonderful. It's going to be visible throughout entire Canada, west to east coast. For us on the east coast, it is going to start quite late. So on the 13th, which is tonight, <laughs> um, just after midnight, the partial eclipse begins. And this is not actually very easy to see. It's a very, very subtle eclipse, uh, sort of eclipse type of effect. Um, the more spectacular is when it starts to enter into uh, the, the actual umbra or the darkest part of Earth's shadow. So we get a penumbral eclipse or the outer part of Earth's shadow starting around midnight. Very, very hard to see. The partial eclipse starts around one o'clock in the morning. But if you want that spectacular, uh, really spectacular, fully red moon, you do have to wait until about 2.26 in the morning. So if you're setting your alarm, I actually recommend going for at 2 a.m. and you'll get to watch it go into that total eclipse at um, around about 2.30. Okay, 2 a.m., that's the magic number to be out there. Um, if That is if you have a great view for, for, from your window. If you are somebody who maybe has an obstructed view or maybe wants a better view, there is an opportunity uh, to watch it on stream as well? Yes, there are several places doing live streams of the total eclipse. Uh, um, including the LNI Carswell Observatory here in Toronto. Um, however, even if you are downtown in the middle of Toronto or you're in a large city with lots of lights, a lot of times you can get that visibility just by walking around the building. So I very much encourage people to go out and, and if you can have any sort of, uh, of view of the sky at all and it's not raining, you'll probably be able to see it. You are selling me on this. I might just uh, uh, set my alarm clock to t 2 a.m. I mean, it is a school night, but uh, it would be great to, to watch this go down. Uh, yes, exactly. And it, it is going to run for a while. So okay. one great thing about the lunar eclipse is it's actually going to last for about an hour. Okay. So from 2 to 2.30, the moon is going into Earth's shadow and it will go from being looking like it has a bite taken out of it to being totally red. But from 2.30 all the way to 3.30, it's actually going to stay completely red. It's going to stay in Earth's shadow. 
Um, so you have an hour to watch it. And then if you are one of those really early risers, you can catch it on the other side around 3.30 to 4, uh, 4.30 that um, redness is going to go away as the moon moves out of Earth's shadow. So even if you just want to wake up at 3.30, I don't, I don't know who does that, but maybe you do. <laughs> um, if you do want to wake up that early, you can still catch it. So right. it's a great event visible yeah. to a lot of people that's going to be semi-easy to catch, uh, slightly easier on the West Coast than the East Coast, but well worth watching. All right. I'm going to set that alarm clock uh, for tonight. Elena Hyde, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, happy to be here. And uh, just don't forget to go and look up at eFolks. This one's going to be a good one.